Hi, welcome to Andrew Buckle video tutorial on Photoshop and the measurement log. Now I'm using 2021. I think the same for 2020, 2019. I'm not certain if all the different settings were available then or not. However, they probably were. So let's just go through the measurement log. Where can you find the measurement log and what does it do? It's even more important, isn't it? Window and measurement log. So there's the measurement log and here's the actual panel. You can resize it, super useful, because it does stretch quite a distance. So you might actually want to just have it further down, resize that a bit and just go down there. And it records measurements at selections, rulers and count tool. And there's some things, other things I would love to see it record. However, they don't. But anyway, it would be nice. Things like shapes. It'd be nice if it could record the shapes, size and things, because you might but that's obviously not the purpose. It's probably for scientific, medical, imaging, those sort of things. Lots of possible uses. And you can use it, of course, in your work for other things as well, I'm certain. Maybe architectural designs, etc. Well, we've got a selection here. Let's just go through these. Now, first thing to do, right side menu, set measurements. I'm going to go for a one-to-one. -one. That's all it does. It sets a ratio. You can just set if you've got an image, you know something's a certain size. You can do ratios and that sort of thing. Set Select data points and it tells you the things that you can it will store for each of those. So it's common, it means for all of obviously all the various things, labels, dates, times, the document name, etc. And also you've got selections, you've got count, area, perimeter, circularity, white height, uh, width, etc. And fortunately some things it should store as well, I think personally, but anyway, that's a different way. I don't know if it stores also if you've got a feathering. It'd be interesting. Would it work with that? I haven't tried that. Anyway, it does work with multiple selections, I know. However, ruler tool, count, length, angle. Why it doesn't record the origin point would be more useful, I would have thought. The origin and end points, that would be useful. Anyway, it doesn't. So you've got that and that and that. And count tool, again, why it doesn't record the individual, all it does is records a count. That's it. So if you do like 15 count markers, it just records it's 15. doesn't record where they were. Uh, maybe it's too complicated to add a lot. However, what you can do, right side menu, again down here, and you've got record measurements, and you've got the same here. I'm going to use this. I'm not going to use that, because that, of course you can always do a shortcut, of course, good old shortcuts there. Now, what I'm going to do, first one is a selection, and the reason why I've got black and I've got white, because I want the, the grey settings, the values obviously of zero and black, white, etc. On those, just to show that it works. And also, of course, I've got a selection there. And I can create any selection. So I quickly create a selection just by any of the tools. And then I'm record measurements. And there's a circle. I've just created a basic circle. And then you've got here measurement seven. That's what it's called it. And then you've got the date, the document, source. It says selection. That's all it says. All scale one to one, pixels. That's a scale unit, a scale factor, count, obviously there's only one selection, and you've got area. Now that works obviously pi r squared, works out, knows exactly from the height and width, what the area is, perimeter, etc. Can't remember what the formulas are for all these things. You've got perimeter, and you've got circularity for there, which is odd, 0 0.9 it says, circularity. Since I held the shift down, you would have thought it would be 1. And it can tell you here, height is 342, width 342. So why isn't it one? Oh, anyway, who knows? Don't understand. Also, nor that does it doesn't actually show the origin point. Again, would be quite useful actually. But then again, I suppose if you've got lot like, multiple shapes over, maybe it just makes it too complicated to have the origin point stored that away. Right. What you got here is also you've got the obviously the width. You've got grey value. That's the minimum. So you got you could obviously I've got black and white, so I've got zero. Woohee! Got grey value, maximum, I've got obviously white and black, so I've got 255, that's why I did it. And also, it's not exactly divided over, but 97 point, that's what it works it out, as the grey value mean. And median as well, zero. Integrated density, I have no idea. I have to be honest, apparently it's a really useful figure of something. That's a lot. 8 million, no. maybe it adds a the pixels I'm not certain that's interesting I don't know and it's got a histogram as well which has got a little tick mark against it okay I'm certain that's useful but uh, however what you can do you can create another selection 
I haven't tested every single thing of this, of course. Must admit, that's very odd. But I guess it's, there's some use to have a history. So you can create, let's say, multiple circles. Let's create multiple circles here. And you can see now, okay, six, six circles. So I can go here, record measurements, and it does show all the sections. But it also has the first one as well. And it's got here count six. So it tells you you've created six selections. Let's say maybe you've so, you know, selected certain areas and you've put that. And it's given a breakdown of the area for each of them. I assume the area of all these ones, these are the individual ones, all add up to this figure. I'm not going to add it up to see if it is, but I would imagine that would make sense uh, for the area anyway. Perimeter, I assume it is as well, it goes all the way around. I'm not certain how it does the calculations of this. Circularity again, it's got, see there's some, some or oh, some you can see are slightly different, they're slightly changed, and you can see that they're not so circular. 0 0.89, 0 0.9, <laughs> it's hard to, and yet that clearly, that circle looks very different from that circle, and it, but it's only a subtle 0.1, very strange. And then you've got the grey value again, you can see because I've used black and white, etc. all across there, and they've all got a histogram associated with it, apparently. Okay, what you can do, you can remove those, let's just remove them. Now, if you didn't want to remove them, of course, you, what you can also do, you can deselect all, you can export selected, and you can delete selected as well, which is you. So you can say export selected. So I'm just going to do that. And it will come up. And it just actually puts it to a text file. It's actually quite nice because then, of course, you can put it into Excel, numbers, whatever. See, something like that. Or import it into something else, I suppose. Other applications that support text files. So now I can delete those. I'm just going to delete them. Delete selected. And it, as always, ask me. Of course, I can always click don't show again. But I'm, yeah, it's done. Right, what you can next do, you can do, I'm just deselect that, I'm going to go over here to the ruler tool. Now, ruler tool only works, well. I've always found the ruler tool slightly an unusual tool, that it doesn't stay, <coughs> doesn't seem any permanent sort of stability. And I would have thought that would be more useful. Because you might make a mistake, so if you say go like across like that, and you think, oh, I went too far. You can't move it, you can't touch it. But it just applies it, so you just apply it again. That's all it does. So it does it from that position. There, and then you can see, obviously, you've got long there. I don't know what the size is, so, but you can record that measurement. And apparently, it's 295. I haven't worked it out. Angle 180. Well, it's 180. It's obviously a straight line across. <coughs> Sorry. You've got here 180. And you can do hold down the shift key. And you can see you've got that length there. And you've got then, you can record the measurement. Now, it only does it when you click record measurement. So there's, and that's one rule of 12, apparently. Obviously, it depends on the, I've obviously been doing a little bit of work beforehand. So every time you create a ruler, obviously, internally, it calls it rule of 12, 13, 14, 15. Now, it doesn't seem to be a way of changing the name. So if you want to keep that, that's what you got. And you can add, so if I had a few of them, let's see if I just do a lot, just very quick. Just want to determine that myself so again across there but unfortunately you can't keep multiple rulers i would think that would be nice if you could do that but you can't record measurement oh no just does rule 13 it only it's based on the recording of it not the actual internal structure for the ruler right and again you've got the same figures there weirdly it says 0 0.78 this time instead of that minus 180 now once you've done that, you've got them all there. You can still go and export them as well. And also the next one is, and again, one thing that's really weird is it doesn't store the origins. And is this a single object? You'd think it would record the origin and the end point. And then you've got count. Well, count, you can add lots of counts. Now, I did a tutorial on count tool, and I didn't mention the measurement log. My apologies. Someone pointed that out to me, and thank you for that. But uh, uh, so I didn't include it. But there's obviously useful. You can so I've got there eleven now. I've created eleven. Now it doesn't record all the positions. I think that would be more useful actually. Again, if you're doing say like a medical research or something, and you click 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 all the way through, maybe hundreds of them. And you want to record that information. Obviously, you could creep it on, put it on a notebook. <laughs> maybe that's, but it's obviously much nicer just to turn around and say, you know what, record measurements. But it doesn't record the positions, which would be more useful. But it doesn't. So if I do report record measurements, count three, 
So obviously there's 11 there, and it does over there, 11. It's got it right, scale factor one, etc. It keeps all that information as well. But it doesn't, would be nice another column there where it would have blah, 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 comma, blah, 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 comma, or something like that. Or maybe something else. So you could actually just get the data, which is a pity. But it doesn't. So there you are, the measurement tool. Measurement log, I should say. However, there is just another little quick thing you've got here. Image and analysis. And down here, exactly all these things. Here's all the various things. That's all it does. Exactly the same as what's over on the right side. But you've got all the options here. Unless someone points out there's more features. Maybe there are. Actually, when I look at the help, there's quite a lot. The help documentation is quite uh, detailed so you might want to check that out in terms of there's a lot of additional but basically this is the sort of uses of this tool rule tool count tool as well as selections and place now place selection marker which i have to say is odd since you could of course just simply place one yourself however it just basically says the length it's got all the data here times roman and you can set the font size, so you can set it up to a fairly large size. You can set the color to black or white, <laughs> limited range. As far as they didn't custom color for that. And text position bottom, so it puts it display text. Click OK. Now that's what it does. Just puts it down there. One pixels. So it gives you the scale factor. Just stores it on the screen. The reason is if you go to now, and I'm just going to quickly show, uh, record measurements. Now it doesn't record that. Which is odd. You think it would record that sort of detail that's clue? I think that would be. However, let's just go over to oh, that. <laughs> what are the layers? Now you can see over there what it does: measurement scale marker and marker group. So you can see there, and it's got one pixel. So it's got the type, obviously marker graphic, and it's in a group, so it's stored away there. So that's it. It's a run through of probably many of the features of this feature, the measurement log, but uh, maybe there's more. And also there might be thousands more uses that you can use it for, but uh, like I say, scientific, medical, those things are the most obvious ones, but I'm quite certain there's many others. I hope you found this tutorial of interest, always adding new tutorials about Photoshop, Illustrator, Affinity Photo, Affinity Designer, and many others. Also, if you've got any questions, any, please put them in the comments. Anything you, I didn't explain well, maybe something you think, you know what, no, you're doing this wrong, you didn't, you didn't explain, you know, please with that. I'm always happy to have some additional information about all these features. There's always something else to learn with everything in Photoshop. Also a dislike or like. Always appreciate it either way. Thank you much.